today's our topic sexual reproduction in flowering plants it is a botany topic lesson 2 we know all flowering plants and your sperms show sexual reproduction flowers are the site of sexual reproduction in this lesson we study pre fertilization structure and events Several hormonal and structural changes results in differentiation and development of the floral primordium. Inflorescence bears the floral buds and then the flowers. In the flower, male and female reproductive structure, the antrium and the gynecium differentiate and develop. this is the flower of our fashion fruit in the we can see all parts very clearly this is the sepals then this is the petals of flower in the this is the antrium this is the gynecium of the flower in this flower this is the gynecium of the flower okay antrium that is the male reproductive organ of the flower this is the antrium it is the male reproductive part of the flower antrium it is the male reproductive part of the flower it consists of a wall of the stamen it consists of wall of the stamen this all part is called a and tissue their number and the length are varying in different species then two parts of the stamens filament and anther filament and anther are the two parts of the stamen this is the stamen it's two parts of the filament and the stamen is the two parts filament and the and there is the two parts of this flower then this is the diagrammatic representation of a stamen look here this is the stamen it's the parts it has filament and and the filament is a long and slender stalk long and a slender stalk is the filament it's a proximal and is attached to the thalamus or the petal of flower this is the proximal end it's a proximal and attached to the thalamus or the petal of the flower okay then and the terminal end typically bilobed this is a terminal and it is typically bilobed each lobe has two thicae so it is called dithecus a longitudinal groove runs lengthwise separating the theca a longitudinal groove you can see in this anther it is separating the theca next we study the structure of microsporangium structure of microsporangium each microsporangium surrounded by four layer of epidermis uh, to study the structure of microsporangium we take this section of this anther this anther uh, we take it's a section with a blade then uh, put uh, this is a section uh, put in the microscope we can it's a, a diagram look here this is the ts of young anther ts of young anther each microsporangium surrounded by four layers surrounded by four layers that is epidermis endothecium this is the epidermis endothecium middle layer and tapetum this is the main four layers the outer three layers give protection and 
helps in dehiscence of the anther to release the pollen. First three layers are give uh, protection and help in dehiscence of anther to release the pollen. The innermost layer, the innermost layer is the tapetum which is multinucleated. This tapetum which is the multinucleated with dense cytoplasm. It nourishes the developing pollen grains. That is the function of tapetum. It nourishes the developing pollen grains. The center of each microsporangium contains homogeneous cells called sporogeneous tissue. Okay, this is the enlarged view of one microsporangium. In the, we can see four layers. Epidermis, endothelium, middle layer and a tapetum. This is the connective tissue. This is the microspore mother cells. Sporogenous tissue. These are the main parts of anther. In the process of formation of microspores from pollen mother cell through meiosis is microsporogenesis. Microsporogenesis, it is the process of formation of microspores from pollen mother cell through meiosis is called microsporogenesis. This is the pollen mother cells. It undergo meiotic division to form the tetrads of pollen. Then uh, it undergo differenti differentiation to form the pollen grains. Okay, this process is called microsporogenesis. Microsporogenesis is the process of formation of microspores from the pollen mother cells through meiosis is called microsporogenesis. The sporogenous tissue in microsporangia differentiate into microspore mother cells or pollen mother cells. Microspore mother cells or the pollen mother cells. Each microspore mother cells undergo meiosis and give rise to haploid microspore tetrad. Microspore tetrad that is the microspore arranged in a cluster of four cells so it is called microspore tetrad. On dehydration, microspore tetrad dissociates to form microspores. Each microspore developed into a pollen grain. Each microspore developed into a pollen grain. Each microsporangium contains thousands of pollen grains. They are released with the dehiscence of anthers. This is the pollen grain tetrad. This shows the stages of microspore maturing into a pollen grain. This is an enlarged view of a pollen grain. Next we study the parts of a pollen grain. Pollen grain represents the male gametophyte. It is spherical and measuring about 25 to 50 micrometer in diameter. It's spherical in shape. It is very minor 25 to 50 micrometer in diameter. It is covered by two layers. First layer and a second layer. It is covered with two layers. The hard outer layer is called etsane. This is the outer layer. It is very hard. This layer is called etsane. It is made up of sporopollenin. Which is one of the most resistant organic material. It can withstand high temperature and strong acid and alkali. Enzymes cannot degrade sporopollenin. The second layer that is the inner layer, its name is intain. The inner wall intain, it is a thin and continuous layer made up of cellulose and pectin. Cellulose and a pectin. The mature pollen grain contains two cells. The vegetative cell and generative cell. The mature pollen grain contains two cells. The vegetative cell and a generative cell. Vegetative cell is bigger 
abundant food reserve and large irregularly shaped nucleus but generative cell it is small and floats in the cytoplasm of the vegetative cell spindle shaped with dense cytoplasm and nucleus spindle shaped with dense cytoplasm and a nucleus okay 60% of angiosperms pollen grains are shed at this two celled stage in other the generative cells divides mitotically to form two male gametes become pollen grain are shed at three cell stage then what is the difference between pollen and pollen grains pollen grains are the male gametes or sperm cells of plant it is typically a single cell but pollen simply refers to the quantity of pollen grains okay pollen grains of some plants example pathenium or carrot grass carrot grass it's otherwise called corn grass pacha are allergic from some people it leads to chronic respiratory disorders like asthma bronchitis etc that type of allergy is called pollen allergy pollen grains or some plants causes some uh, chronic respiratory disorders in some uh, some people that disorders is called pollen allergy okay. one example is the pantherium it's a common known as a carrot grass or the corn grass patch then economic importance of pollen grains pollen grains are rich in nutrients pollen tablets are used as food supplements pollen tablets and syrups increase performance of athletes and race horses and nowadays it is very demanded the next important they are stored for Use in liquid nitrogen, negative one hundred ninety six degrees Celsius, very low temperature. They are used as pollen banks in crop breeding programs. These are the economic importance of pollen grains. Okay, thank you.